<laughs> I loved it. Stunning. I loved it. Yeah, it's absolutely stunning. And of course, you come down here into the living room. We've saved this till last. Yeah, we've, um, we'd love to live here, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is amazing. Let's go outside and see what that offers you, and then we'll get down to business, shall we? Okay. Come on. Outside the 1.1 acre plot is mostly later lawn, which wraps around the property on three sides. The big question now comes, doesn't it? How much then, Claire, do you think this is on the market for? I'm going to say 600,000. 600,000 pounds, yep. Yeah. All in then, Mick? Um, I was going to say that, but uh, maybe a bit more, so I'm probably going to go 625. 625,000 pounds would seem a fair price for this. I don't want to disappoint you, which is why I'm absolutely delighted to tell you that this is on the market for 575,000 pounds. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised, I'm surprised at that. There you go, Claire, it's doable. That is yeah. doable. I have a feeling that we will be making it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in about five minutes. Yeah, OK. Well, look, don't rush it just yet. We'll give you five minutes, yeah. uh, perhaps a bit longer, to go and explore the house at your leisure. Mm. Just enjoy it. Go on, off you go. Thank you. <laughs> off you go. And go and relax in the sure knowledge that they can happily afford it. What a brilliant end to a perfect house tour. This modern detached family home comes in a welcome £25,000 under budget, but provides four double bedrooms with plenty of living space. It's also surrounded by open countryside, not far from a quaint Welsh town. I, I spent last night imagining myself living in property too, and then you brought us here today, and um, I think this is the one for us. It's a completely different prospect to anything we've seen before. It's so much more house. I can already see us living here. Mm. I just hope we are in a position to um, secure it. It's my house. <laughs> my name on it, that house. Has it? Yeah. Oh, good. I hoped it might. It's certainly quite a property. It is indeed. But that's it, guys. House tours are now over. OK. Shall we? Absolutely. <laughs> Before you come back? Come on. <laughs> Well, it is now time to draw Claire and Mick's house search to a close. I think it is fair to say we have given them more than enough to think about this week, but what of their future? Well, perhaps here in the quiet confines of a beautiful walled garden, we can make sense of it all. Well, how are we? Oh, Worn out, run, <laughs> to be honest. Rung out. Rung out, yeah. say, yeah. in a good way, I hope. Yeah, yeah. Three, I think, really interesting properties this mm -hmm. week, which you have given due consideration. But I think it's fair to say there is a favourite, and it is... The mystery house. The mystery yeah. house, yeah. OK. I could have designed that house myself. It is everything that I want in a house, and it's a 10 out of 10 house. Wow, that, that's, that's praise indeed, because mm. we get lots of nines. But a 10 out of 10 house, same for you, Mick? Yeah, definitely. It's absolutely lovely inside and, um, yeah, more or less perfect for us. I think it, it is a proposition which gives you lots of house, but still set within, you know, some very pretty countryside, yeah. albeit in a part of Wales that you had perhaps not fully considered. So, what happens next, Mick? We need to do a little bit more research and speak to the agents. There's a couple of questions we have yeah. and, um, yeah, we are considering making an offer. Are you? We're not going to waste time. <laughs> yeah, don't. Because time <laughs> is of the essence yeah. in the current market. Yeah. Well, look, it's a big investment. It's a big decision. But I'm really pleased that we've given you lots to think about and hopefully ended up with a genuinely viable option in which you can now see yourselves living for the future. So best of luck. And as always, let us know how you get on. But it has been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. We've enjoyed it too. Yeah. Thank you. I am lucky enough to have spent over half my life living in Wales. And there is no getting away from the fact that once known and experienced, this landscape 
draws you in like a big embracing pair of arms. It's like a magnet that keeps drawing you back. Certainly that is the case for Claire and now of course for Mick. But when you look at this landscape and understand just how rich it is in culture, in language and in history, it's a bond well worth being in. I'll see you next time. I am thrilled to report that Claire and Mick made an offer on the Mystery House which was accepted and they hope to be moving into their new home any day now. If you would also like to escape to the country in Wales, Northern Ireland, Scotland or England and need our help, you can apply online at bbc.co.uk forward slash take part. We're in the heart of the Lake District. Rhinos and hard knock passes in Country Foul tonight at 6 on 1. And from 7, the problems of life in water in mammals. Five intrepid duels race from Japan to Indonesia. Mum, speed up. Gonna race to win it. Yes! Flipping it. Absolutely bonkers. Uh, go, go, go! Race across the world continues Wednesday at 9 on BBC One and iPlayer. You ready for this? Oh, come on. Give me a number, give me a year. Ah. It's gonna be a moment. Here it comes. There's a lot to take in at the London Marathon. We've got Big Ben giving it 110. Chewy in a hurry. That girl's mum. That man's grand. No limit to the human spirit. A bard. A bird. A great human herd. The world's best being put to the test. And, whoa, I think that's my old maths teacher. There's a London Marathon for everyone. Next Sunday at 8.30 on BBC One and iPlayer. It's Sunday afternoon on BBC One. Dan with you. Time to put the work in for the victory. Man United versus Chelsea in the Women's FA Cup. Well, there is an exciting semi-final going on on BBC Two at the moment as Tottenham up against Leicester have just entered the second half of extra time. And one of those teams will have the small task of facing either Manchester United or five-time champions Chelsea under that famous arch. Both of these teams were at a sold-out Wembley last May and both desperate to be there again. It's old versus new, it's red versus blue. Let's hope it lives up to the hype. Oh, God! The flag is on! Drama already at Wembley. That, for me, is a penalty. It's harder. And Cole! Inevitable! Come the hour, come the sun! Blue is the colour. Yes, a repeat of last year's final today. Chelsea looking to add a sixth FA Cup to their trophy cabinet. Manchester United looking for revenge. And kickoff is in 15 minutes' time. Well, a stellar semi final requires a stellar lineup today. Ellen White and Rachel Brown finish alongside me. Ellen, a bit of a roller coaster for Emma Hayes and her Chelsea team over the last couple of weeks, but it's a chance to get in the headlines for the right reasons today. I think roller coasters putting it very nicely, Alex. Uh, yes, there's been, um, yeah, a lot of talk. Um, I'm not sure what. We totally understand everything that was being said, but yeah, I think reflecting, especially on the Conti Cup final, 
I wanted all that spotlight to be on those Arsenal players. I think there was a bit of a dark shadow that you know happened at the end of that game that the spotlight wasn't for them. And I think for this game in particular, I want the football to do the talking, the players to be in that spotlight, and hopefully by the end of the game, there'll be lots of goals as well, Alex. We're hoping for lots of goals, Ellen. Let's talk about Manchester United, Rachel, because when you look at their season, today's a big one for them. It's their only chance of silverware. So how do you assess their season? Yeah, and they don't look like they're going to finish in the top three, you know, which would have been Champions League spot. I reflect on last season, how successful they were leading the line at Christmas and high hopes for all the fans as well as the team. And they've really dropped off. I think the fact is they haven't kicked on like City, Arsenal and Chelsea have done. Um, so assessing this season, a little bit under par, but I think all the hope with the fans. And they've got really kind of, they've got really patient fans to some degree. Mm -hmm. uh, they know that it's a relatively you know, young project, Manchester United in the women's team but also the demand standards that Manchester United fans would expect. Yeah. So Mark Skinner's contract's up this summer. They're in talks, apparently, about who's going to whether he's going to renew or whether someone else will come in. All these things will be revealed, but today is a huge day for Manchester United. Yeah, I like how you just mentioned the word standards, because Ellen, our director, producer, they've dug into the archives oh no, and oh they've no. pulled out this one because... <laughs> The last time me and you played in an FA Cup final <laughs> was back in 2013 when we played together for Arsenal. Talk us through that one. I just tried to hit that as hard as I possibly could, Alex. Uh, <laughs> do you know what? It's so special, isn't it, the FA Cup? Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, that was a really special one. Um, yeah, not, not the best crowd, uh, yeah. but, um, but, yeah, it was, it was an incredible day. Yeah, just under 5,000 fans that day. When you think about that final at Wembley, over 70,000 just shows the amount of work that's gone into the women's game and the strides it's taken, Rachel. Absolutely does. And, you know, as much as it was special, like, you know, I won the World... Uh, not the World Cup. <laughs> the <laughs> FA Cup. You guys have won the FA Cup lots of times. But to have it at Wembley is just a whole other level. And to now have it at Wembley on an annual basis, for it to be sold out most of the time, or near, near there or thereabouts, it just makes it look special because people can watch it on TV, see the admiration of the players, mm -hmm. see the energy that's in the stands, and it totally feels special for all of women's football. And you two, hopefully, a day out in the sunshine. Whoop, whoop. Here we go. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at the starting lineups today for both teams. Okay, two changes to the Manchester United side that beat Everton 4 1 last time out. Golton and Williams get the nod ahead of United's top goal scorer, Nikita Paris, and Brazilian forward, Jay Z's. Former Chelsea player Rachel Williams has already scored three goals in three FA Cup appearances this campaign. And as for Chelsea, only one change to the side that lost to Arsenal two weeks ago. Guru Wrighton replaces Shokan Nushkin in midfield. Former United player Lauren James is starting today and she'll be hoping to continue her form against her old club, having scored a hat-trick the last time these two sides met. Well, this is the first outing for Chelsea since their quadruple hopes ended in a Continental League Cup final defeat to Arsenal two weeks ago, a match where the sidelines did most of the talking. I've been in women's football a long time. I don't think we should tolerate male aggression. Uh, to be honest, I can't really take it seriously. I, I can't really take it seriously. Well, Emma, last time out, some left the League Cup final talking more about what happened after the game than the football itself. Yeah. Two weeks on, how do you reflect on that day as a whole? I spent the press conference talking about it yesterday. I'm here to talk about the game today, so my focus is on you know, the team performance and coming out and what will be you know, a hostile environment. It's going to be packed here today and we're looking forward to it. I understand that, but for the Chelsea fans who couldn't watch the press conference, and because it will be talked about today as part of our match coverage, I wanted to give you the opportunity to reflect on it further and add anything that you wanted to. As I said, I'm here to talk about the cup game. Um, it's a really important opportunity for us. You know, Man United are a team that we always have such great battles with, and I know it will be very much the same today. And um, I think the crowd always make it noisy and interesting. And I think these are the good things that are happening in women's football, that the fan bases are whip up an amazing atmosphere. I'm looking forward to that. 
Well, look, we are going to mention it because in case you didn't see, Emma Hayes did recite a Robert Frost poem, a 1943 poem, in her press conference about following a star, asking for clear answers, said she had a conversation with her son. What were your thoughts on that press conference, Ellen? happening um, yeah I think for me uh, either apologize and then put a line under it I think we're all coming away from it a little bit confused by it and I think for me what I said before you've got to give the players an opportunity to be in the spotlight and it's all about the players so either apologize don't apologize I think a line's got to be drawn under it Rachel actually thinking about it is it a way we know Emma's into psychology she has a lot of mentors it's a way to deflect pressure off her team and actually keep it on her She's certainly very accomplished at doing that, and we've seen her do that in the past. And, and if so, it's very clever. Um, but I, I don't think it is. I think she's just circling around the point. She just needs to apologise, and everyone will move on. OK, well, let's talk about someone that will be replacing, reportedly replacing M. Hayes at the end of the season, Sonia Bompasta, a great player for the French national team. Equally now, she's got a stellar CV. What are your thoughts on her coming into this Chelsea team? It's so exciting, if that does happen. You know, success at Lyon. Has, has been phenomenal as a relatively young coach coming in. Her international career has been had such longevity to it, a key part of that French national team. Um, and I think it'd be really exciting for the Women's Super League and the whole of women's football in England for, to have her. Yeah, she was a great player. Many great battles up against Sonia Bombasta. Right, let's turn our attentions to the home team and Manchester United in a day that could define their season. We sent along Joe Curry to speak to Ella Toon and Nikita Paris to find out how much they know about the FA Cup. We're in Manchester with Nikita Paris and Ella Toon as they go head to head in our big FA Cup quiz, putting their knowledge of the country's most iconic cup to the test. Now, as you can see, we've got a buzzer. It is fastest finger first. I need you to come up with your own buzzer noise. <laughs> Bang! Bang, good. <laughs> oh! It's like a gazelle. <laughs> first question, who is top goal scorer so far this season in the whole of the Women's FA Cup? <laughs> Bang! <laughs> <laughs> Too late. Um, me? Yes. Oh, top man. Next question, spell Wembley backwards. Bang! Y. E. No. <laughs> yeah. L. B, E, W. You missed, yeah. you missed out the M. You missed out the M. So close. In 1986, and at Wembley Stadium, Queen performed two sellout shows there. Name me a Queen song, and for a bonus point, sing a line from it. Bang. Okay. Bohemian Rhapsody. For a bonus point. I'm just a young boy from a poor family. <laughs> Last year, records were broken at the FA Cup final. How many people attended the game? <laughs> 63,000. And 64. I'll let you see who goes closest. Bang, 80,000. <laughs> you get a point for that, 77,390. How many FA Cup winners are there in the Manchester United squad? Two. Three. Oh! Who? Hannah Blundell, Nicky and... Harris, and Rachel Williams. Yeah. What is the capacity of Wembley divided by three? Oh. 30,000? Yes! Nice, <laughs> well, you know, guys. <laughs> Who in the United squad has previously played for Chelsea? Hannibal <laughs> <laughs> I'm really sorry. I've got, <laughs> yeah, I've got to go the points this way. The winner is. It's a draw. Draw? Yeah! <laughs> I'll take a draw. You win my admiration and my praise. Congratulations. <laughs> Yeah, big smiles from both of those players there. But Ellen White, are you surprised that Manchester United's top goal scorer this season is not starting? I am a little bit surprised, but again, I think Rachel uh, Williams will really set the tone up top for, for Manchester United. So from, from the way that they're going to set up, I think it's all about putting um, Chelsea under a lot of pressure and Rachel Williams will bring that. Is this game about revenge today for Manchester United? Well, it should be for the final, but also the performance at Stamford Bridge was so poor and it needs an injection of intensity and fire, and that's exactly where Rachel Williams is starting. OK, well, lots riding on this game today. And someone that knows both teams very well, having been in goal for both of these sides, Siobhan Chamberlain is up in commentary alongside Vicky Sparks. Thank you, Alex. Hello, everyone. Welcome 
Chelsea's hopes of a quadruple were ended by Arsenal last time out in the League Cup final. Now their dream of a treble is on the line in Emma Hayes's final season in charge as they face a Manchester United side on the hunt for history, namely a first major trophy and a first ever win over Chelsea. Well, as we heard there, former Chelsea striker Rachel Williams is given a rare start as Manchester United boss Mark Skinner makes two changes from the side that beat Everton in the league. Leah Galton makes her first start in a month and a half after injury with top scorer Nikita Paris and Jay-Z dropping to the bench. This is their 12th meeting with Chelsea. Ten defeats, one draw. Can they finally get that first victory over the Blues this afternoon and reach their second major final? Gura Raitan replaces Shokanuskin in Emma Hayes' only change from the team that were beaten in the League Cup final by Arsenal as Chelsea look to reach their seventh FA Cup final in ten years. Former United attacker Lauren James bagged a hat-trick when these sides last met back in January. Will she shine on the big stage once again? Well, Emma Hayes has won this trophy five times with Chelsea, looking to lift it for one final time in her final season with the club. And this would be her last trip to Wembley with Chelsea as well. It's a huge game for her and a huge game, of course, for Manchester United and Mark Skinner. Looking to reach Wembley for the second time in their history. It's been a disappointing season in the league. They sit fourth. They're outside of the Champions League places. How key is this woman going to be, Siobhan Chamberlain? Key is the word for me. Rachel Williams is going to be really important for Manchester United today. Her physicality, her presence up top is going to be vital. But she's also a goal scorer and she's going to need that ruthless clinicalness that we saw from her at the start of the season if United are going to progress today go on to Chelsea and for me someone that goes under the radar quite a bit Melanie Leopold she's a player that doesn't always get the plaudits but for me she's key to everything Chelsea do she's recently retired from international football as well so she should be nice and fresh it's her birthday as well so we'll be looking for double celebrations well our women in the middle Kirsty Dowell today for this huge women's FA Cup semi-final here at Lee Sports Village Manchester United against Chelsea and there is the Manchester United manager Mark Skinner looking to lead them to Wembley for the second time in their history as at the start of this game the players take the knee the message against racism still clear so a repeat of last season's FA Cup final which Chelsea won by a goal to nil thanks to a goal from Sam Kerr who is one of several big names still missing for the Blues through injury they are looking to win this trophy for the fourth season running. And here is another former Chelsea player, Hannah Blundell, leaving away for Manchester United. And the first chance for Galton to get on the ball. Huge player for her to, for Manchester United to have back Siobhan. She made a comeback from injury off the bench and scored in their last match against Everton, but to have her able to play apart from the start, exactly what United need coming into this game. And this is why. Look at her go. Leah Galton, Garcia in the centre. Garcia's there! Manchester United hit the front inside the opening minutes of this women's FA Cup semi final. And that is why Leah Galton is such a big player for Mark Skinner to have back. Garcia finishes it off, but it's all about the work from Galton down that left hand side. Perfect start for Manchester United, 1-0. And that is why you want Leah Galton on the pitch. She gives you that balance from that left-hand side. But Lucia Garcia still has it all to do. It's an outstanding finish. As the ball comes through here, it's got to be defended better by Chelsea. It's not good enough. And Leah Galton pounces first, just drives forward. First thought, can I get it into the box? Garcia pulls off at that back post and the header Leaves Hannah Hampton with so much to do. So difficult to make that save from point blank range. And it's a brilliant start for Manchester United. Chelsea will look at the defending. They'll know they could have done better. But Manchester United and Lucia Garcia took full advantage.
What a start for the home side who have never beaten Chelsea in their history. When you're looking to upset those record books, you couldn't dream of a better opening to this semi-final for them. And now it's Toon's turn to put Hampton under pressure. Flicked on by Ritting Carnarid, forward by Turner. Here goes Galton again, challenged by Perise. You'd literally just asked me about what Leah Galton brings to this side. Emma Hayes will be hoping she wasn't on the pitch after that delivery, but for me it's the balance. That left foot, the way she can pull out wide, the way she can go direct, and her deliveries into the box, as we saw there for Garcia for her goal, they're fantastic. They're pinpoint and they're delivered on a sixpence, as we've just seen. Here is Hampton, beaten inside the opening 45 seconds here at Lee Sports Village. Manchester United attacker, you can get under her skin. She's got to keep a cool head here. She has got to keep a cool head. She'll get frustrated if people try and pull at her, but she's talented enough on the ball to get away from it. She knows she's going to win the foul. She knows she's won it. But aside from that, Katie Zellum knows exactly what she's doing there. She knows how to rile players up if she needs to. Here comes Chelsea down the right-hand side. Important put in from Turner on Ramirez, Chelsea corner. Not really seen much of Ramirez just yet. I know there's only four minutes gone. There's already so much happened in this match, but she's a player Chelsea will need to get on the ball, get the ball up to. Yeah, there are so many subplots I want to discuss with you, Siobhan, but at the moment, just got to focus on the action because it has been a lightning start from Manchester United. Chelsea looking to hit back. Wrighton with the high delivery, flicked away by Galton. Leipolz will collect for Chelsea. And no nonsense from Aoife Mannion. Definitely no nonsense from Aoife Mannion then. No playing out of, out of trouble. Clear the danger if it's there. And that's what I like from Aoife Mannion. She's come back into this side after being out for so long with injury. And she, she's performing really well, especially you saw her for Ireland in the week against England. And she's there again, winning the ball ahead of Neve Charles. I mean, that's the thing. She's up against some incredible talent. Lauren Hemp midweek internationals. Now she's up against Wrighton and Charles. It's not going to be an easy afternoon for her, I'm sure. Here is Carter. Perise. Buchanan, Charles, look at the space for Wrighton, if she can find her, and she can. Gura Wrighton, now James. Well, she's going to get that reception all afternoon when she's off target. But they know all about her quality, Lauren James. They do, and I think it's very rare for her to be that off target. Wrighton does so well there to hold her line against Mannion and keep herself on side. And when you see Lauren James in that position, You'd back your house on the fact that she hits the target. And nine times out of ten, it's even finding its way into the back of the net. That time, miscued, but you can't afford to give her that many opportunities. 
Well, his side with the early lead here at Lee Sports Village. The winners of this tie will face Tottenham in their first ever Women's FA Cup final. They've beaten Leicester by two goals to one after extra time. Here come Manchester United once more. Buchanan's clearance for Chelsea. Ramirez flagged offside. Interesting choice by United there. Mary Earps going long, direct into Leah Golton from the goal kick. They obviously like to play out from the back, but I think it's a real strength of a side that can show that versatility and say, look, we've got talent up here pressing us. Can we bypass it and go direct? We've seen the, the problems that Leah Golton scored off, um, caused after just 45 seconds. It'll be interesting to see if they stick with that today. Dalton with the header on small. Carter away for Chelsea. Williams. Good defending by Chelsea. And they do win the free kick. A little bit of petulance there for, from Ella Toon. A little bit frustrated that she let the ball get away from her. Cuthbert. Mannion reads that well. Zeller. Tenalsen. Taken off her toes by Brighton. Now Cuthbert once more. Space for it in Kanaridz. Well blocked away by the former Chelsea defender Hannah Blundell, who was described as a legend of the club when she left Chelsea for Manchester United back in 2021. 165 appearances, 12 goals in her 11 years there. Real servant for Chelsea and now, of course, for Manchester United. Yeah, look, she's done really well since she's come to United. She struggled for game time at Chelsea towards the end, but she's been a real stalwart of this side since she signed. She won Players Player of the Year last season. It's testament to, to her mentality to, to leave a club like Chelsea where you're getting all that success, to say, no, I still want to be playing, and to come up here and do so well. Yeah, signed a new deal last month as well at Manchester United. All of the off-field narratives revolve around the futures of their manager, Mark Skinner, and several of their players. Here comes Chelsea. Let's come watch all the way out of the penalty area. Only an under pressure from Charles. And the throw goes the way of Chelsea. Great pressure there from Neve Charles to win that back foot. There was one body in the box there for Chelsea. It's not often you see them deliver it. Again, they're forcing it from Leopold's. It's not often you see Chelsea delivering balls from wide areas while they're in possession and not have at least two, three bodies attacking it. Well, there's been a lot of attention on Chelsea since that League Cup final defeat. Of course, the aftermath with Jonas Adeval, the Arsenal manager, and Emma Hayes, the Chelsea boss clashing at full time in the subsequent press conferences and poems quoted amongst others as Carter nods it back to Hampton. But Chelsea under a bit of pressure over the last couple of weeks, losing the League Cup final, third time they've lost the League Cup final in a row. It looked as though it might be a season for a perfect send-off for Emma Hayes, but those quadruple hopes is extinguished. The treble hopes now on the line and trailing early on to a Manchester United side who reformed in 2018 and have never beaten Chelsea in their history. Look, although Emma Hayes would never say this, I think should take the Champions League win and give the rest of it away. Obviously, you're not going to give it away. You're not going to say you're happy losing. But that Champions League is the elusive one that she hasn't got so far. And I think if she finished the season with that Champions League, I think she'd be quite happy. Yeah, they are in the semi-finals of that competition. They're up against the European champions, Barcelona, who beat them at that stage last season. Second in the WSL, three points behind Manchester City with a game in hand and just a goal between it when it comes to goal difference as well between those sides. She is a serial winner 
Her legacy at Chelsea is quite remarkable. But as a serial winner, to end this season empty-handed will be something I'm sure she'd barely be able to contemplate. The treble is still up for grabs, but they're behind here to Manchester United, who are dreaming themselves after a disappointing campaign in the league of winning their first ever major trophy. Brighton, little miscontrol. When the ball has gone out of play, it will be a throw to Manchester United. Chelsea just not quite ticking at the moment. Normally see them popping the ball around comfortably. Balls like that into right and should control without even thinking about it. At the moment, there's something just slightly off with Chelsea. They haven't been able to find their rhythm. Pressure. This definitely could be a contributing factor. These players are used to playing under pressure. They're thriving on pressure. I'm sure it's just a matter of time. Nelson's ball charged down by Leipels. All the way back to Mary Earps. Interesting formation at the moment in possession for Manchester United. It's almost slotted into it three at the back with Manny and Matissier and Turner. Just gives Chelsea something else to think about as Hampton picks it up from Buchanan. Yeah, I think Hannah Blundell's tucked in a little bit at times. Aoife Mannion comes in as well when she needs to. I think they're just trying to make sure that they pick up those gaps and make sure that Lauren James, especially in that number 10 role, isn't given the opportunity to... to receive possession, face up and drive at them and, and cause problems. It's been a very good start indeed for Manchester United. Charles. Knighton putting Letizia under pressure. That's the step out there from Mannion to come and put pressure on. But if Neve Charles wins it first and gets it in behind to Wrighton, that's where it causes problems for United and that's where Chelsea are going to benefit from it. Ramirez, such good hold-up play, using that strength for Colombian. James, now Perisic. Meeting Connerids. Nice footwork. Cuthbert will spin to Manchester United, but convincing clearance by Nelson. Lipos has it now. Up and under towards Ramirez. Letizia barged off it by James, but fairly so, says our referee Kirsty Dowell. It will come to Ramirez. Very good challenge by Nelson. Cuthbert has it though. James, Ritting Carnarid, still going. Erps is there. Really tidy hands there from Mary Erps. It's a difficult one as she cuts back through. Calm and composed. Good play by Chelsea. They're relaxed under pressure. Relaxed in possession, one and two touch, moving it around. And Ritten Carnid there, who's looked lively down this right-hand side. Sends Hannah Blundell to ground. They couldn't get the power on the shot. And tidy hands from Mary Earps. Zellum. Here is Williams. Draws the foul from Charles. And that's what Rachel Williams is good at. She's got that physical presence. She can draw a foul. She's clever. She knows where the pressure's coming from. She knows how to hold her ground. And if she needs to go to ground, she can do. Well, she has plenty of history, both for and against Chelsea, Rachel Williams. Seven goals in 13 games for them. And her spell with them in 2014. Also an FA Cup winner with Birmingham against Chelsea back in 2012. Scored the late equaliser to take it to extra time. She could be involved here. Garcia's delivery was poor. A poor delivery, as you said, from Garcia, but a really well-worked free kick from Manchester United there. Garcia's pace down this right-hand side, opening them up. The quality of the delivery just wasn't good enough. But she is the player who's made the difference so far. Uh, and Leah Galton taking up the perfect position to give Manchester United the lead after just 41 seconds of this game.
Like, I think I'm sure Ellen White will talk about it at half time, but it's not an easy header there from Garcia. The way she pulls off the back shoulder of the defender there to give herself the space to get the height to head it in. Ellen White was a master of it herself, so I'm sure she'll let you know about it at half time. But it's really intelligent forward play from Garcia. Sixth goal of the season for her, and a big one as well for the Spain international. Forward by Perisic. Blundell in a foot race with Ritting Connerid, and Ritting Connerid's won it. Ramirez in the centre. Turner's there. Before, Ritting Connerid has looked really lively down this right hand side. Hannah Blundell's in for a tough afternoon, just didn't have the quality on the delivery. There were bodies in the box that time for Chelsea. It just needed to be whipped across with a little more pace. Here is Charles to James. Now Wrighton. Charles once more has been sharing the armband in the continued absence of Millie Bright with Erin Cuthbert for Chelsea. Cuthbert wearing it today. James wins the corner off Letizia. United have looked quite comfortable defensively at the moment. Chelsea haven't pulled them out of position as much as they normally do when you're up against players like Lauren James. She likes to drag you around, pull you out wide, get you central. You can see here she's gone out into that wide left position, tried to get the delivery in, but it's quite comfortable for United's back line. Taken short by James, shortish to Perise. Cuffett's there, cleared away by Galton. Nelson up against Rypols, who gets there for Chelsea. Intercepted by Williams. Nelson can't clear it though, and Chelsea almost managed to fashion something inside the area. Williams should be able to clear now and wins the throw. Just a little bit scrappy there from Chelsea. You normally expect their set pieces to be done with precision. The cutback there wasn't with enough pace, wasn't with finesse to be able to take the touch and get that delivery in. Forward by Perise. Letizia tight on James, who does steer it to Charles. Ramirez wanted it. Manages to lay it off to Ritting Connery. That's excellent defending by Leah Galton. Cuthbert. Carter. How would you assess Chelsea's response to that very early Manchester United goal? They've looked quite comfortable in possession, but they failed to. to ask Mary up too many questions it's getting around the edge of this 18 yard box they've got the possession but it's got to be that final ball that's got to be there with quality which is what we're used to seeing from Chelsea Mannion too strong for Wrighton it was a gasp that that free kick went against her but that is turning into a good battle down Manchester United's right and Chelsea's left between those two it definitely is and I can kind of see where her frustration comes from She's being held back there by Mannion quite physically. But it's that part of the pitch that Chelsea get to and then are struggling for ideas once it gets to around that edge of that 18-yard box. Away by Buchanan. Michaels gets the better of Nelson and Cuthbert takes charge. Here she goes, Erin Cuthbert. They are winless in their last two games, Chelsea. They haven't gone three games without a victory since December 2021. A draw with Ajax when they were essentially already through in that tie. So that is the caveat to that. And then the League Cup final defeat by Arsenal. Looking to get back on level terms here. James. Buchanan. James. Perise, Ritting Connerids will reach it. Leipolds allows it to run for James, cleared away by Turner. Charles there ahead of Garcia. Williams there for Manchester United. Now Mannion. And that could turn into a brilliant ball. 
And it would have done were it not for some very sharp defending by Jess Carter. That's fantastic defending by Jess Carter. And she even made it look easy. She was behind Ella Toon there. Ella Toon looked favourites to me to get there, to reach that ball and to be through an opportunity for goal. But Jess Carter just strolled on past her, showing exceptional pace and defensive awareness. It's a reading of the game, isn't it? In these 1v1 situations, there are players that are quicker than her. But so often, she gets that fine margin in terms of her starting position and her ability to get her body in between her opponent and the ball. When, as you say, in a straight foot race, often it looks as though she might lose. Here comes Leah Galton, Perisay with the foot in. I think the fact that she's played so many positions across that back line, right back, left back, centre back, in a back three, gives her that added awareness of where her, her teammates are, where the opposition are in there. Just put the burners on. Just absolutely <laughs> sped back there, calmly passed back to Hannah Hampton, no problem at all for Chelsea. Tune under pressure from Leipolz, and she's done brilliantly. Tune with the delivery, Williams is there! It's the former Chelsea striker who undoes Chelsea. Dreamland for Manchester United midway through this first half. An opponent they have never beaten, but they're 2-0 up in this FA Cup semi-final. If there are any questions about why Rachel Williams is in this starting lineup, there is your answer. It's brilliant play from Ella Toon and the delivery is fantastic. Again. The striker pulls off the back shoulder, leaves Buchanan there, and it's a fantastic header. But it's all made by Ella Toon and her work rate right there, her footwork. Another brilliant goal for Manchester United. Well, she has barely started for Manchester United this season. 36-year-old Rachel Williams. She's in the twilight years of her career. But that is why he made that call. It was a big one. It had a lot of people talking before this game. But she has given Manchester United breathing space. Can Chelsea cut that back immediately? Offside flag is up against Wrighton. And it's through with Mary Herbs. Well, when you've got Nikita Paris, when you've got Jay-Z, when you've got Mallard, all exceptional centre forwards. Rachel Williams is the one he picks, and there's a reason for it. And that is why he's picked Rachel Williams today. Well, he said, Mark Skinner ahead of this game, we are preparing for an epic fight. But fight is what Chelsea need to show now because they've been second best. They're 2-0 down. And their treble hopes are in jeopardy. Here is Perisay. Ritten Connerids. Gets the better of Blondell. Ramirez. Perisay well challenged. Ritten Connerid has by far been Chelsea's most dangerous player down this right hand side. She's caused problems time and time again for Hannah Blundell. But until someone comes up there with her, until someone gets raises their game to her level, it's quite comfortable for United. Buchanan. Carter. Parasite. Rutting Connerids. Here she goes. Cuthbert, bit of space. Deflection. Corner. And no more for Chelsea's Erin Cuthbert. She didn't connect with it as well as she'd liked. But again, Ritten Connerid causing problems for Chelsea, for United, driving in. And Cuthbert with too much space at the edge of the box there. She's got so much space to release that shot. Just deflected wide. Wrighton's delivery. Perhaps trying something different. Cuthbert. Here's Carter. 
Can Clerk once more. Struggling for ideas at the moment, Chelsea. I think that's the problem. Manchester United scored so early and have now got that second. They can afford to sit back and defend. Chelsea have got to move the ball around a little bit more, be more creative. Leipold's challenged and Manchester United come away again. Colton, Nelson bursting through the centre. Here she is, up against Carter. Colton. Blundell. To Zellum. Williams is there. Not quite the connection this time. But Manchester United will be absolutely delighted with this performance so far. Chelsea very much second best. They definitely will be. They haven't had a lot of opportunities, but when they had, they've been, have, they've been clinical. Rachel Williams there just snatching at it slightly as it comes across from Katie Zellum. Just a little bit behind her. But still, you see the space she's in when she picks it up at the edge of that 18-yard box. Defensively, Chelsea have got to be asking questions. Charles won't keep it in. Not going to plan so far for their side. They've won four of the last six FA Cups. They've won the last three in a row. They have never lost to Manchester United. She is a manager who will not panic huge experience in this game but this probably is one of her biggest tests certainly of this season and potentially as Chelsea manager 2-0 down to Manchester United away from home in an FA Cup semi-final and the Manchester United who have the bit between their teeth they definitely have and it's, this is a challenge and this is where as a manager with the squad that you've got the players that she's got on her bench the ability to change formation and tactics this is when she works her best James looking for Ramirez, will come to Leipolz. Manchester United will clear away. And a few boos as Leipolz just took a little time getting back up to her feet, but she is now. And Chelsea will have to build again. Perissa, James now taking up this wide right position. It's just not happening for Chelsea at the moment. It's not, and I think you can see from the body language as well, they look frustrated, they look a bit lost of ideas. Normally for Chelsea, things pop around, things mo move, things flow. It's smooth, it's easy to watch. This is quite difficult to watch from a Chelsea perspective because there's, there's that lack of ideas, that lack of trust of knowing where your teammate's going to be, and it's not something you're used to seeing with Chelsea. Well, we mentioned the players that they still have out, Chelsea. The list is lengthy and it's packed full of quality. Knights of Sam Kerr, Mia Fischel, Lee Bright, of course, such a huge miss. Just three of those players, but they do have a huge amount of quality on the bench. And they might need to turn to it as Manchester United turn their attentions to attacking. Blondell down, free kick. I mean, even with the injuries that, that Chelsea have, the players they still have on the pitch and on the bench is it, it, phenomenal. It's, it's a fantastically talented squad, and that is why Emma Hayes has built her squad like this. Manchester United still with a couple of long-term absentees. Lots of Gabby George and Emma Watson among them, but it is a strong bench as well for the home side in terms of the players that they have in the squads. Most of them available to call upon, and at the moment, the 11 on the pitch, well, are doing a very good job despite that little miscontrol there from Narsen. The commentator's curse is genuinely true. Well, not too much cursed about this performance overall in the first half, though. It's been exceptional from Manchester United. Looking for their first ever victory over Chelsea, and what a time it would be to get it to take them to their second major final, their second trip to Wembley. Periso, plenty of time to play. That's what Chelsea will be thinking. There is plenty of time, but I think. The worry for Chelsea is that the lack of creativity. They haven't been 
forcing Mary Earps into save after save after save. If that's happening, you think it's just a matter of time. We're making, creating the opportunities. But that's not the case at the moment. That bench is going to be delved into at half time, I'm sure of it. Here you come Manchester United again. Williams challenged well by Carter. Charles. Manchester United themselves in decent form coming into this one. Two defeats in their last nine games. They've really built momentum here at Lee Sports Village as well, winning their last five home games. But beating other members of the big four, Manchester City, Arsenal and Chelsea, has been few and far between as Wrighton's delivery will be reached by Rissing Carnage. She's done well there. Cuthbert. Trying to work room for the shot and can't do so, so it gets Perise involved. Saw the run of Charles, here she is, Neve Charles, back across. Feed away by Manchester United. Who suddenly are sitting deep. Perise. Carter. Taking matters into her own hands, Jess Carter. Not sure Kirsty Dowell is going to take that in her stride, our referee. So Buchanan picks it up for Chelsea. Carter. James. Dropping deep to get involved. Good ball through to Cuthbert. Space closed down quickly. Charles is there. I think Wrighton just distracted her there. Cuthbert has it. And the header at the far post won't reach Ramirez. Ritting Connery completely unmarked. All of a sudden. Manchester United looking a little bit frantic. They do clear away for a Chelsea throw. There's just so many bodies there in defensive positions for Manchester United, ready and waiting for deliveries. It's difficult to find those gaps. Chelsea are so good at putting those deliveries into the box, finding those gaps, picking up those pockets. But at the moment, there's just so many bodies to meet, to beat, to get through. It's making it incredibly difficult for Chelsea. Charles. Brighton. Carter. James again taking up that wide right position. Here she is, Lauren James. Early delivery behind Ramirez. Cleared away by Letizia on the stretch to Garcia, who scored after 41 seconds in this FA Cup semi final to put Manchester United ahead. Rachel Williams going down there, the number 28, scoring United second, the former Chelsea player. When we talk about Manchester United's progression, Siobhan, it is easy to forget sometimes that this is only their sixth season as a professional club after reforming in 2018. As Garcia puts Buchanan under pressure. Well, I think she's <laughs> almost made that decision for Kirsty Tyler herself there. But in terms of what they've achieved so far in that time, they exceeded expectations by finishing second last season, getting into the Champions League for the first time in their history. They sit fourth at the moment in the WSL, so outside of the Champions League places. Six points behind Arsenal have a game in hand as James dinks the ball into the side netting. Still not coming off for Lauren James. But in terms of, if you look at isolated games, that has been a real struggle for them, hasn't it? Getting the better, not that they haven't done it, but getting the better of the likes of Chelsea, who they have never beaten, Arsenal and Manchester City at the moment, despite Lauren James's best efforts. They are still preserving this two-goal cushion, but this victory at this stage of a competition where would this sit in terms of the progression that Manchester United have made during their time after reforming? This win today would be huge for Manchester United. Yes, they haven't been around for too long, quite newly formed. But a club like Manchester United has standards, it has expectations and it has demands. And if you're wearing a Manchester United shirt with that Manchester United badge on, they demand success. And this team needs to start to win something as a Manchester United team, especially after coming so close last season, as we said, second in the league, get into FA Cup final. The next step is can United win something?
Chelsea doing their best to answer that in the negative. Looking for a way back into this game, but they've lost it. Michaels will pick it up. Perisse. Turner there ahead of Ramirez. Here is Carter. Buchanan. Oh, intelligent ball looking for Wrighton. Well, marshalled by Mannion and cleared away by Letizia. Perisel. Zellum there ahead of Ramirez, who does well, wins it back, but then poor ball. It's just not coming together for Chelsea. They can't build that sustained momentum of accurate passing. No, as we said before, it's that final third play in and around the edge of the 18-yard box. They're comfortable before that. They're moving the ball around. But once it gets into those areas where it's congested, where it's difficult, there's lots of red shirts. You need that little bit of magic, that little moment, that touch that's going to create you that opportunity. Both sets of players appealing for that, but it does go the way of Manchester United. And I'm not too sure they're going to be in too much of a rush to take too many set pieces at the moment, especially with six minutes or so left to go before the half. They'll be pleased to go in with a two-goal lead. Here say under pressure from Toon. Carter a little lax in position. Manny. Garcia. Nelson's made the run, so it's Buchanan. Good defending and covering across there by Buchanan, but that's what Nelson does best when she makes those runs into those channels from midfield she's so energetic she's boxed a bit box she hasn't really got forward too much today she's had to do a little bit more of a defensive responsibility but she could cause problems for Chelsea in those areas Ramirez back defending for Chelsea she's lost it though and it will break to Toon Toon with the delivery looking for Williams and a little miscontrol Hannah Hampton does just prevent the corner. Well, very calmly headed back by Perisay. I'm not sure. Hannah Hampton will thank you for that. Former goalkeeper Siobhan Chamberlain, what do you think? No, I'm not convinced I'd like to receive that kind of back pass, but she does well. She manipulates the ball on the first contact to keep it in and prevent any kind of corner. I'm sure Perisay would tell you it's all under control outside the width of the goal, so no risks taken. Now, Ramirez has gone down in a collision with Letizia. Ball is all the way through with Mary Earps. And our referee, Kirsty Dowell, stops play. And a bit of concern here for Chelsea's forward, Myra Ramirez. But we can see here as she runs across Mayor Letizia. Gets completely body checked. I think Manchester United will be pleased that there's no VAR in force today. Is there an awareness there from Letizia or does Ramirez simply just not see her? I 
think Maya Letizia is aware what comes on her back shoulder. You can see her checking. There's a there's definitely an awareness there. There's a movement towards the player to block her run. And it's probably a little bit more physical than you'd expect and that you'd think you could get away with. Let's just hope that Ramirez is okay. Well, a chance for both sets of players while Ramirez continues to receive treatment, to receive instructions. And there is Jonathan Giraldes, the head coach of Barcelona, scouting out the opposition. His side played Chelsea in the Champions League semi-finals starting next Saturday in Barcelona and then the return leg at Stamford Bridge. A week later, you will be able to hear both of those ties, incidentally, on BBC Radio. First leg on BBC Radio 5 Live next Saturday lunchtime, 12.30 kickoff UK time. Five Sports Extra will bring you the commentary from Stamford Bridge. So far, though, here at Lee Sports Village, it's been Manchester United's afternoon, very much so. It definitely has been, and you can see the tenacity there from Ella Toon and the quality in the delivery. And Rachel Williams with the brilliant header down into the ground, which makes it so difficult for the goalkeeper to save. Making it 2-0 to Manchester United early on in this first half as well. Well, she scores so many big goals for Manchester United, Rachel Williams. That is her 10th of the season. Normally, they come from the bench. But given a rare start by manager Mark Skinner, and those decisions have very much paid off. Golton, her name, you would expect to come back into the starting lineup after injury. But Williams, that was tactical. And it is a decision that has yielded much fruit so far as Ramirez gets back up to her feet for Chelsea. Still moving quite gingerly. Got to hope that she can shake it off. It was a very physical contact from Maya Letizia. And Chelsea will be hoping she can shake it off as well with the number of injuries they've got to centre-forward positions right now. Yes, absolutely. No Sam Kerr, no Mia official. They do have the likes of Katerina Macario, who made her comeback for the USA after over two years out in the international break. But again, when you've had a player out for over 20 months, she has made seven substitute appearances for Chelsea, scored a couple of goals as well, Macario. But you are very careful with a player who's been out first with an ACL injury and then various complications in her recovery. Here is Ramirez. She back up to full speed. Shepherded away by Blundell. She's moving well, Ramirez. Moving very well indeed. Here she goes, the Colombian, past Blundell. Can't pick out a blue shirt. Cuthbert will try and keep it alive for Chelsea. Galton's in there. Into five minutes at a time at the end of this half. Manchester United leading by two goals to nil. Could be a key time in the game this for Chelsea and for Manchester United. Can they preserve that two goal advantage? Can Chelsea get a goal back before half time? We well, wondered how much of an impact that knock would have on Ramirez. That was her best moment of the game so far. So maybe it could be a positive for uh, Woken her into the game, perhaps. Here come Chelsea once more. Lipols. Perisay. Good delivery. Ramirez is there. And unlike Rachel Williams, unlike Lucia Garcia at the other end, she can't take her head a chance. She can't, but it's more positive for Chelsea. There's bodies in the box there, combining well. It's a good delivery. It's defended well by Letizia, could you say? Or could you also say she gets pushed? It's a push in the back from Letizia there. And again, for the second time in the space of five minutes against the same player, Letizia will be glad that there is no VAR in are you surprised that Ramirez, particularly with that one, hasn't protested more? No, I think we want players to stay on their feet. We want them to say, stay up, keep playing. But if they do get pushed, you want them to get the decision. Otherwise, they will continue to dive when they don't get contact. And when they do, they'll go to ground when you say, why don't you try and finish? Because they're not getting the decisions. 
Well, I think she has a right to feel frustrated there. Myra Ramirez and Letizia walking a bit of a tightrope at the moment. I always wonder whether the referees have a little look at the highlights at half time, get told about decisions that they've made. As a player, it's always something that goes through your head. Just no attempt to win the ball whatsoever. I think that is what is so damning for May Letizia. Of course, you have jostling, but that is a clear two-handed push. Eyes on Ramirez, and it clearly impedes Ramirez's ability to play the ball. I think Chelsea will feel very aggrieved by that decision. Ritting Carnerid. Up against Blundell. Perisay. Decent delivery and the header brilliantly saved by Mary Earps. Outstanding stop from Lauren James. And Earps quite rightly congratulated by her teammates. Big moment in this game. A huge moment in this game. We said it would be a fantastic time to score for Chelsea. And it's a brilliant save by Mary Earps. Lauren James rises highest. It might have been about to hit the post, but Mary Ertz wasn't to know either way. Got herself across, got the hand to it, and out for a corner. Well, she's not had much to do in this game, Mary Earps. But she has pulled out a big save there as Perise swings the corner in. Cleared away by Zellum. Here goes Perise. James is in there again. It will fall to Lipols. Lead away eventually by Turner. Buchanan is telling Hannah Hampton to come and get that ball and send it long again. Hampton duly obliges. Controlled by Charles. Nicely. Wrighton. Good one too. This is better from Chelsea. They're finishing this half strongly. And they've got that key goal back on the stroke of half time. Former Manchester United attacker Lauren James. A little bit of pushing and shoving afterwards as well. But a huge goal for Chelsea from a huge player. And they're back in this game. 2-1 Manchester United lead now. Lauren James may miss once. She may miss twice, but she won't miss if you give her a third opportunity. It's a clinical finish from her, and that's what she does best. Arrives late, finishes firm. All started from a brilliant delivery from Hannah Hampton. One touch play down this left-hand side. Neve Charles with the delivery comes across, cuts it back. Inch perfect for Lauren James and rifled into that net, giving Mary Earps absolutely no chance with the save. It's game on. Game on indeed. And when you need a player to finish in that sort of position, Chelsea will be delighted that it was Lauren James there. And there is the afters after that goal. Here is Buchanan. How key was it for Chelsea to get that goal back on what was nearly the final action of the half? Oh, it's huge. It changes both managers' team talks considerably. Does Emma Hayes now need to make those changes she might have been thinking about making? Does she stick with it? We've turned it around a bit. We've got the goal. We can now continue and build on that into the second half. And for Mark Skinner, it's a slightly change of dynamic now. Chelsea have got the momentum, they've got the energy, and they know they can score goals. It's going to be a very interesting second half. And for Manchester United, until that goal went in, overall a hugely positive performance. But at half-time, it is now just the one goal in it. 
What a second half we have in store. Manchester United 2, Chelsea 1 at the break. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Vicky. Thank you, Siobhan. Well, Manchester United have never beaten Chelsea. This is huge. It's a great semi-final. That late goal by Chelsea does change the dynamic of the game. Ellen, we were talking about Chelsea coming into this game. Rachel, I even asked you, is this kind of a re revenge match for Manchester United because of the, it's a repeat of last year's final? Manchester United kind of started like that. 100% they did. You, you could tell the impetus that they had, the desire, the energy. And we've not seen that from Manchester United very often this season, but they absolutely brought it today. It was fire, it was energy, it was, as you said, revenge is what it felt like. And they kept it up throughout the whole first half. It was a really impressive, aggressive, feisty performance from Manchester United. Yeah, the last time Chelsea have lost in an FA Cup was the quarterfinal back in 2020 against Everton, that game being 2-1. Surprise start by them, Ellen? Yeah, I think a surprise start, but then also I feel like the changes that Manchester United had um, really gave them interest. Imp <laughs> I'm say the word. I felt they gave them energy. Rachel Williams, Leah Galton, they were disciplined. The structure was very di complete opposite for when we watched them in the WSL when Chelsea won 3-1. Uh, I just felt like they were just on top the whole game and Chelsea couldn't get a foothold in the game. Yeah, well, look, we were rushing to get up to our seats. We'd only just about sat down and we'd already seen a goal happen. Rachel. It was fantastic, wasn't it? It wasn't kind of, it wasn't the most impressive of build-ups, but you could see uh, what Manchester United have done is target Ev Perise in that right-back position and, and, and force that one-to-one -one battle between Leah Galton and her. And what it does is puts Ev Perise on the back foot and ensures that she can def on, only defend, but it also keeps the ball higher up the pitch. And they've done that by switching it from Manchester United's defensive third on this occasion it's uh, it's Mary Oates does it, but they've done it in throughout the first half. Centre halves have gone long into that area. Yeah, and I think I think Rachel Williams does a great knock on. It's it's a poor clearance from Perise, and then this ball from Leah Galton oh. that dink to the back post, and that's a, such a hard header from. Uh, Garcia where she just drifts to that post the back post and she just guides it where the ball's just come and I think that's really tricky for Hannah Hampton to be able to save something like it, that. It's a beautiful header from a, a non-centre forward that looks dead easy but how you've, just, <laughs> uh, how you've described it she just arcs a run doesn't she to be able to time it and hang up there and redirect it and no chance for Hannah Hampton you know it's got to be stopped at source and that source was you know the long out ball so yeah. they've been excellent Manchester United. Garcia's sixth goal of the season actually Siobhan in commentary said it's an Ellen White-esque kind of header and a goal. I'll pay her later. <laughs> <laughs> She's trying to keep on your good side. But do you know what's actually interesting? Because Emma Hayes spoke about in her, um, just before the game when she was speaking to Joe Curry, about the atmosphere, the fans here and how hostile they is. Do you think that led to that initial mistake from Chelsea? Now, I'm not sure about that, but I tell you what, it got Manchester United fans on their feet and, and excited and singing. And we're right behind the Chelsea fans and you can't help but hear them. But it certainly lifted the energy level and you want that as a home match, a knockout match, a semi-final, to be the home team, you want your fans to be up and on their feet from the first moment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they brought the energy on the pitch and it's fed fed off onto the fans. It's been excellent. Yeah, well, Ellen, coming into this game, Mark's going to make in a big call. Nikita Paris not in the starting lineup. Rachel Williams coming in and proving the manager right with an all-important goal. 100%. I think she, she's really led from the front in, in this game. And it's great work initially by Ella Toon, um, twisting and turning. And this ball in the box is just pinpoint but then the movement from Rachel Williams she just kind of just sits off the back shoulder of Buchanan slightly and just the gut the way she can guide a header she's unbelievable at this anyway but yeah just that slight movement and then just guided that ball past Hannah Hampton and this is this is what Rachel Williams does best in the air in between the centre halves heading the ball into the goal this is what she's done for so many years in the WSL and the reason why she started this game we've all played in teams alongside Rachel Williams and that's I exactly think I've still got the bruises <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what she does she hangs between the players and then goes and powers down the line of it again unstoppable and again from the same side uh, that was conceived almost a carbon copy of the first goal Gisela Toon on that in-swinger yeah and then going into the half time we're thinking it's 2-0 
and then Mark Skinner being happy with his team's performance. But 2-1 totally changes the team talk, Ellen. 100%. And I think going in at 2-0, they've never beaten Chelsea. They'll be very, very excited and happy. But I think it's just a disappointment, isn't it? Because they were so disciplined. It was an unbelievable ball from Hannah Hampton. Great work by Neve Charles' strength. But then to pick out Lauren James, who has been really... I, I feel like the Manchester United defence has really defended her well. She really hasn't had many chances. So then to leave her free, this is what she's going to do. She's going to score from this. Yeah, it's one of the first times Neve Charles has got in beyond the defence of uh, Manchester United, whether it be Garcia or Mannion. And that's not happened at all this first half. And the one time they do do it, she finds the cutback to Lauren James and said emphatic finish from there. And is that the thing, Ellen, that sometimes you might not get much of the ball as a striker and in those kind of pockets, but it's being there at the right time and waiting for those moments? A hundred percent. It's not. It's, it's about being patient and not being frustrated. And it, it's, it's obviously going to happen. That they, they galvanised, they got back together after that 2-0 um, Chelsea and obviously thought, right, what can we do? And yeah, it's getting into those right positions and Lauren James is very, very good in and around that six-yard box. Chelsea found different ways to win this season in different competitions. Sometimes it's not looked pretty. Sometimes it's been absolutely, you know, it's sensational football. And so they know how to get themselves back into games. It's all teed up for a brilliant second half. It sure is. But Ellen, I suppose in the second half, Manchester United's defence need to be even better than they were in the first half. But you were really impressed before that goal went in with their defending. Yeah, no, I was really pressed right from the front, right through the back. I keep saying the word discipline. I thought the the involvement of both Rachel Williams, but then also Leah Galton. The back four were really structured and so disciplined. One would come out, another one would fill in. Constantly all over Chelsea, um, not not giving Lauren James a minute to, to rest. And, and obviously they got a corner from that, but she just couldn't get the, the ball into the box. And the strikers, uh, sorry, the uh, wing players on either side, Lucia Garcia, Leah Gotland doubling up. And you see first contact, second contact. And when play goes in for the 1v1 just here, she's fine, gets past it. Who's covering? Rach Williams is in the right position to be able to cover. And they did that. So when we're talking about defending, we're talking defending as a team. So when your, ball, when your team does not is not in possession, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. And every player is affecting what Chelsea do. But then it's also, are they going to be able to do this for 90 minutes? It's a, it's a slog. Well, I can't wait to see the second half. What an exciting match. And earlier today, there was another great semi-final going on on BBC Two as Tottenham hosted Leicester. If you missed the action, here's the best bits. It's a loose ball from Green. Here's Clinton pirouetting away. That's a great touch. It's Nilden straight at Cop who makes the save. Corner kick. Okay, it's a good turn over here. I don't know, maybe just Ganaz there. She does a little spin. Obviously, Bazet picks it up. Great first touch, to be honest with you. But keeper makes herself big. Big, important save. Here is the dangerous Utah Rantala. Rantala goes for goal! surprise she's been doing that all season she's done it in the semi-finals of the FA Cup pretty much took the net off the technique it's becoming her trademark Rantala and that is a huge goal in this tie time on Tottenham's side but that's really good play from Cayman trying to slip it through for Rose. Tierney! Crucial stop from Spencer. Tierney should do better there. It's a great little cutback. She's stepping straight onto it, Tierney. She doesn't connect with it properly. I think it is her shin pad. Great save by Becky Spencer with her feet there while she's already on the floor. England. Oh, forward towards Nas. It's a mistake. Jessica Nas in here. It's Nas! Composed finish at the vital moment. And Tottenham level. Bimbo back in, it's Thomas! Inches. 
fingertip save from Kopp to keep the score level. It's Rantana off the bar. It's a, it's a great free kick. I mean, it's, it is pretty central, though. Vinberg swings it back in. Martha Thomas enjoying the big stage and it looks like she's going to enjoy the biggest stage of all. Wembley awaits Tottenham Hotspur. Well, history made for Tottenham a day out at an FA Cup final. It's huge for them, isn't it? Yeah, it's incredible. Um, I think I think for anyone to reach an FA Cup final, but for to make your debut, um, yeah, I'm just really excited for them and their fans as well uh, to go and have an incredible day uh, at Wembley. And Martha Thomas coming up with the big goal. It's the 10th goal of the season, but a little subplot in there. Grace Clinton, obviously she's been a huge player for Tottenham on loan. We're just showing you the goal here, the all-important goal that Thomas got her team to Wembley. But carry on talking about... Grace Clinton on loan from Manchester United. If Manchester United do get to that final, Grace Clinton will miss out playing at Wembley. How would you be feeling as a player, Rachel? You know the situation, but you just couldn't have written the, the story, could you, that you're for the first time you're helping your team that you're on loan at get to Wembley, but actually the downside is you might not be able to play if it is against Manchester United. Uh, Martha Thomas will be up against, you know, if Manchester United go through to the final, up against her former team. Will Manchester United room sort of selling her? She was a bit part player, wasn't she, at the time at Manchester United? And absolutely flourishing playing uh, for, for Tottenham Hotspur. But, you know, when the draw was made and it was clear that one team was going to have their first ever time at Wembley. Mm -hmm. it's, it's historic, it's super exciting. Yeah, a big congratulations to Robert Villingham and his team. Right, let's take a look what we have coming up on the BBC for you. OK, today at 4.15, you can watch the Rugby League Challenge Cup quarterfinals as St Helens welcome Warrington. That one's on BBC Two. Then you can catch up with all the highlights from this weekend's Premier League on Match of the Day Two. That's on BBC One tonight from 10.30. And ahead of next weekend's marathon, get yourself in the mood with the Pace Setter Marathon Mix with Harry Judd. That one's available on BBC South. I absolutely love casualty, yeah? but mommy, yeah, can't she has to look away, isn't it? You don't yeah. like the hospital dramas yeah. where I can watch them and I love yeah. the dramas. And even though it's joking, blood, I have to look away. And Mark's favourite is? Sporting news. Sporting news, we're all different. And, and the odd murder. I am getting a little <laughs> bit concerned how many murders Mark is watching. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness me, yeah. Well, look, it's a huge second half for Chelsea. How does Emma Hayes' team find their way back into this game, Rachel? Stay calm and, and reflect on what they plan to do because they caught them off guard, Manchester United, and continue to um, stop Chelsea getting into the flow. So they're going to have to be clever and really think about how they're going to get pockets, find, find the pockets. Lauren James need to well, change it up, get into that little pocket between the defence and midfield and, and play quicker. I think there's been... Not enough tempo to the game. Clearly, Neve Charles bombing on down the wing had great effect towards the end. More of that. Some smiles in that Manchester United huddle. But how do they keep their heads in this second half, Ellen? I think it's more of the same, not, not to be overawed by the occasion. Um, and I think it's just getting it into those wide areas and crosses into the box. It's really causing Chelsea some problems. Well, like we mentioned, Manchester United have never beaten Chelsea. Could today be the day? Or will the five-time FA Cup winners Chelsea find the way back into this game? Let's get you over to our commentary team. Siobhan Chamberlain is alongside Vicky Sparks. Thanks very much, Alex. What a time it would be for Manchester United to make that little piece of history to beat Chelsea, to end Emma Hayes' hopes of winning. A treble in her final season with the Blues after they saw their quadruple hopes ended in their last game, the League Cup final defeat by Arsenal. But Siobhan Chamberlain alongside me, that goal just before half-time, Lauren James getting one back for Chelsea. What's your gut feeling? How key could that be? I think it's huge. I think it's the perfect time to score a goal right before the break. They've got the momentum. 
And you can see they've started on the front foot exactly where they left off. They know that they want to get an early goal. They know they want to get this game won. Score early, score again early. Put Manchester United on the back foot and get this game won and get to Wembley. Here is Buchanan. Carter. Now Perise. Within Karnowitz. Ramirez in space. And too much space. She's offside. Very confident Manchester United back line there that it was an offside call. Millie Turner holding that line. And see how she steps. Very clever defensive play there from Millie Turner. Well, she did pick up a knock to the head towards the end of the first half. That collision with May Letizia was then subject to a push behind Letizia in the penalty area. Both went unpunished for the Manchester United defender as Blundell wins the header. But as you said, Siobhan, her, her best play in the half came after that first incident, the collision with Letizia. Both did go unpunished, but she could be the one that could turn into be the biggest punishment for Manchester United, because, as you said, attacking-wise, she was involved there at the start of that move. But she's been key for them since that injury. Well, there are the options that Emma Hayes has on her bench. Looking at the forward options, we've mentioned the likes of Katarina Macario, but they also have Aggie Beaver-Jones, Yelena Chankovic as well, who can come on and... Do a job in the midfield in an attacking sense. Frank Kirby, of course. And Shokanuskin, who can play pretty much anywhere, but can slot up further up the field as well. You we spoke about the fitness levels of a player like Macario coming back in after being out for so long. She's a player that excites me, and she's a player that I'd love to see come on. Obviously, not sure how fit she is right now. I think if she is, she's a player that can cause problems for this Manchester United side. Well, it was good from a Chelsea perspective to see her get some minutes for the USA over the latest international break, making that long awaited comeback for her country. As Carter, the tune right behind her, deals with this for Chelsea. You can see Jess Carter asking the question of Hannah Hampton there why didn't you come and make the claim? I think for me, as a goalkeeper, you want to make a decision, you want to stick to it. She made the decision early to drop in. She knew that Jess Carter was in control of the situation. She knew she was going to win the race, let her win the race, let her do the defending. Didn't cause any problems for them. Here goes Ramirez. Ritten Connery to the centre. Ramirez still going. She really has come to life in this game. Myra Ramirez still going. And in the end, the shot was tame. It will be a Chelsea corner. She didn't connect with the shot, but she's connecting with everything else right now. Driving through this Manchester United defence, pulling them out of position. Cuts back in onto that left foot. There's too many bodies in there. Able to make the block. So right and over this corner for Chelsea. Perise there as the short option. The right and will lift it in. Cleared away by Letizia. James out to Perise. All the way back with Buchanan. Whitting Carnerid, head down, will chase. Rondell gets there. The right idea there from Buchanan. She knows that Whitting Carnerid has won the battle down this right-hand side so far in that first half. Can she whip it in behind, get Hannah Blundell on the back foot, chasing back and see what Canary can do? Directing at goal. Well, let's bring in one of those subplots, seeing as we have you, former England goalkeeper Siobhan Chamberlain, Hannah Hampton and Mary Earps. Looks as though that is now a real battle to be England's number one. Earps has had that shirt for a long time now, including the last two major tournaments as Buchanan is pulled back advantage played, but Hampton played in the last match against the Republic of Ireland after Earp started against Sweden. More thoughts on that in a moment, but Chelsea coming forward once more, looping delivery. 
cleared away. Leipold's with the drive, blocked away. Manchester United living dangerously at the moment, and a brilliant save by Mary Ernst from Lauren James. She's been beaten once by James, but she's made two top-class saves from her as well. And maybe that's a perfect introduction to who should be England's number one, in your opinion, Siobhan Chamberlain. The perfect introduction, and that is an outstanding save. The way she gets across, the first one's flopped, but the ball comes back in, moves her feet tremendously well to get back across goal and to claw that out. Almost a certain goal. You can see the build-up to it as the ball gets delivered in. The footwork is phenomenal, just claws it out, preventing it from crossing that line. She's a brilliant goalkeeper. And she's made a brilliant save right there for Manchester United, keeping her team in the lead right now. In terms of number one, though, that's a completely additional conversation because Hannah Hampton is another goalkeeper that's performing exceptionally well. She's a young goalkeeper. Her distribution is phenomenal. We saw Chelsea's goal in today's game started from her clip to Neve Charles. She's confident, she's commanding, she's brilliant, both right-footed and left-footed. We've seen that save there from Mary Earps, and that is why she's been number one for England for so, so many matches at the moment. It's a brilliant battle to be watching. Buchanan trying to shepherd it out and does so. Just going back to Mary Epps, I mean, she has received some criticism, as have Manchester United's back line more generally, and there's a big debate amongst fans about whether it's errors from Mary Earps or whether it's errors from the back line that are letting her down. Will having been dropped, because I think you could say it was dropped for the Republic of Ireland game and Hannah Hampton given that opportunity, will that have spurred her on and galvanised her as Hampton fires it into Rachel Williams and rather sportingly there, stops to make sure that Williams is OK? Well, they're all, they're both giving us something to talk about, aren't they? They definitely are, and I think Hannah Hampton's come in. She didn't probably have the most perfect game against the Republic of Ireland, but she kept a clean sheet. She was confident. And Mary Ertz will have been frustrated by not playing that game. You want to play every single match. And we've seen today by the saves that she's made, she's saying, look, I'm here and I am still number one. She might be called into action here again. Rissin Connerid still going. Tried to play it through to Ramirez, whose run had taken her away from Rissin Connerid. But Chelsea are playing some nice stuff in this second half. Chelsea are playing some nice stuff. And if United are going to progress to Wembley, I'm pretty sure that Mary Ertz may have a few more big saves to have to make. I think it just gets better every time you watch it. It's the change of direction for me, the way she's able to move her body shape to get back the other way, to get that top hand across and the power to keep it from crossing that line. Here is tune for Manchester United, a rare foray forward for them in this second half. Galton, tune. Galton once more, up against Perisay. And the France defender does well. And she's a little overly physical there. The referee has stopped play just to make sure that Leah Galton is OK. There was no free kick given against Perisay initially. Like solid defending there from Perise. Eyes on the ball constantly. Didn't take them off. Managed to win the tackle. I think it's more the collision afterwards, slight fall. Thankfully, both players up and ready to continue. So Carter will take possession for Chelsea. And here is Buchanan. If you're Emma Hayes, at what point do you start looking to that bench? 60 minutes. They're starting, to, they're creating opportunities, and that's what we said in the first half. The first half they weren't creating, and that's a problem. Given away by Lauren James, though. Marlson skipping past live holes, and here is Rachel Williams, Garcia. Williams down, referee Kirsty Dowell uninterested, and Charles has won the ball back from Garcia. And Chelsea should be able to play their way out of trouble. Ramirez up against Leticia, she's done brilliantly. 
Can she find a teammate? The answer is no, and Earps will clear away. And now Chelsea's turn to hear the whistle go, and Williams this time does win the free kick, the foul by Melanie Lipovs. Well, it's definitely getting a bit fiery. This second half has livened up a little. Challenges flying in from both sides. And you can see Ramirez's frustration for the, the challenge beforehand where it wasn't brought back for. And United end up in possession. Forward by Toon. Cleared away by Charles. He was right and Larson got there and send the ball out. Well, his side, amongst many positives this afternoon, have continued that scoring run that they've managed since losing the FA Cup final last season to Chelsea. Now 31 games in a row in all competitions that they've netted in. It's been at the back that their performance hasn't quite been at the level that it was last year, which is why they're sitting fourth in the WSL. Yeah, look, I think it switched up a bit. Last season, they kept so many clean sheets. That, that's what they built from. They knew that they could keep clean sheets. They knew that they'd keep it tight. And then they could go and nick a goal every now and then or, or, or score a flurry in other matches. This season, it's been the complete opposite, isn't it? You've always known that there's likely to be that goal conceded. So United have got to end up then scoring more. Ramirez, it's all Chelsea in this second half. And they find a way back onto level terms. Here is Ritten Canarid, who's been bright, taking on Blundell. Perisic. Carter getting involved. And she is Jess Carter. Saw the run on the far side of Ryson. Laid back behind James. Won't reach Charles and Garcia. Trying not to turn into trouble. She's done really well there, Garcia. But that pass was loose. Letizia sliding in. Did win the ball away from James. Cuthbert has it. Almost ran into Golton, but she's done brilliantly. Ritting Carnerids. Room for the shot, all big shouts for handball against Katie Zellum. Not given, and Katie Zellum's reaction there. Did she look like a guilty woman? Was she turning away from the referee, Kirsty Dow? Chelsea infuriated, no penalty. We'll have to wait for the conclusive replay. If you've got a guilty face, and you're definitely going to be turning away from the referee. Here goes Cuthbert, beaten away by Earps, will come to James, Miss Q into Nelson. James trying to latch onto it again, still going Lauren James, and Earps is there. It was a comfortable stop at the second attempt for Mary Earps, but you're right, it's all Chelsea right now. Could she have done better with the first? I think if that had resulted in a goal, she'd have been frustrated at herself where it was deflected into. But Lauren James just couldn't get the connection that she wanted. You can see the handball there. I think we've seen them given, but it would have been very harsh. It's very down by her side. Here is Ramirez into Turner. Leipold has it for Chelsea. Cuthbert, now Perise. Cleared away by Turner on the stretch, but it's last ditch defending at the moment for Manchester United. Chelsea have a corner. Chelsea are knocking on the door. Chelsea are banging down that door. This is the kind of defending you might expect to see with five minutes to go, ten minutes to go. I'm not sure Manchester United can handle 30 minutes of this type of pressure. And there we see the replay of the handball again. Yes, she turns away. Yes, she knows it's hit her hand. But I think that's going to be harsh. It's down next to her side. Perisay's delivery and the header is over. They'll be looking at the T-shirt line as well as it's known. Exactly where does the ball strike it? How much on the arm? Is any of it on the shoulder? They would be if we had VAR, but we don't. They don't, and it means game on. Let's keep the game flowing. It's, playing. it's being played at such a great intensity right now. There's momentum, there's shifts in it. There's opportunities, there's chances, there's tackles, everything's flying in. Keep the game flowing. We don't want a three-minute break for VAR. Yeah, potentially the more times you see it, as the arm come out, 
It is unnatural. You can see the frustrations from Ritten Kanner there for it not being given. But we have the luxury of about 10 replays. Yeah, definitely arm. Definitely away from the body. And definitely, as you said at first, Siobhan, seen them given. There are a couple of big penalty decisions that have gone against Emma Hayes' side in this game. Well, VAR ruled a goal out for them in the League Cup final last time out, but she has spoken about it in the past. Not having VAR and goal line technology makes the women's game feel like second-class citizens, she said in the past, Emma Hayes, and I think there are a couple of decisions that her Chelsea side will point back to. But nothing you can do about it as players. You've got to get on with it. You know you don't have the help of VAR in this game. You've got to win it yourselves with the decisions that the officials make on the pitch on the day. Ritten Kanner, it's delivery. James was in there. It's cleared away by Turner. We'll come straight back at Manchester United. Ritten Kanner, it again. Little deflection off Blondell. That was marched over there by Gura Wrighton. Had claimed anyway, but we'll get the free kick. Yeah, it was a bit unnecessary there from Wrighton. I think Mary Earps just make sure that she's OK to continue. Chelsea potentially showing a little bit of frustration there as the ball comes, gets delivered in. Barge, shoulder barge there from Guru Wright and just letting Mary Earps know that she's there. And what it does is create a stoppage in play that really doesn't benefit Chelsea as both sets of players head over to the touchline as the medical staff are on to tend to Mary Earps. Yeah, hopefully she's okay after making those last couple of big saves. She's a key player for Manchester United and they won't want there to be any kind of injury hopefully it's just managing herself and making sure that all is well managing herself managing the game i'm not a physio why did i think you'd give an answer along those lines goalkeepers union Siobhan chamberlain but emma hayes has the chance to impart a few tactical instructions to her players. What, what do you think she'll be saying at, at this point? Don't get frustrated. Keep it moving. Keep creating the opportunities. But we've got to be clinical that with them. We've got to take our chance when we get it, and we've got to finish it. Because they are creating opportunities. They are creating chances. They're making Mary Earps make saves. So don't get frustrated by it. Keep doing what you're doing, and it will come. If not, she's going to make changes. Well, Mark Skinner has made a change in the midst of this. Ella Toon has been replaced by Hayley Ladd. So experience on in the Wales midfielder, Hayley Ladd, who was part of the Wales side, who had that... Brilliant start to Euro 2025 qualifying under their new manager, Rianne Wilkinson. 100% start, two in Zada two against Croatia and Kosovo. And Ella Toon's afternoon is done. Yeah, not particularly happy about making way there. You want to be on the pitch. You don't want to be coming off, especially in a game like this, at a time like this. And it's a defensive substitution for Manchester United. Hayley Ladd's a, a holding midfielder. She's going to sit back a little bit more. Ella Toon, obviously, more of a 10 creating, running in behind. Mark Skinner's obviously thought that that's what the game needs right now. He's made big calls so far. The referee has also made big calls so far. But all that actually matters right now is the fact that Manchester United are winning 2-1. Huge penalty appeal that doesn't go Chelsea's way. Big call, as Siobhan Chamberlain says, made by referee Kirsty Dahl. So Mary Ertz back to her feet. Launches the ball long, midway point approaching in the second half. That's been Chelsea's half very much. But it's Manchester United's score line, and you see a Garcia who scored after 41 seconds. Off and away again. Ahead of Lad and Cuthbert into six. Brighton, Ramirez, 
James through the center. Letizia out with Ramirez. Ramirez still with it for Chelsea. Oh, well, she caught there by Letizia. Well, for once, that battle goes the way of Myra Ramirez, and she might say not before time. And she'd be right to say not before time, to be honest. Maya Letizia has got lucky quite a few times today already. I think if she manages to avoid a yellow card, she will have got lucky once again. You can see she's watching the ball, she lunges in, but it's the arm that comes across. Just comes across the face. And she's frustrated because she won the ball with her foot, but you can't come across the face of an opponent. And in the aftermath as well, she kicked the ball away, Letizia. I think, well, we said in the first half, didn't we, she's walking a bit of a tightrope. She is once more. Can't afford to lose their discipline, Manchester United. It's been so much to praise about this performance. James swings it in, straight into the arms of Mary Earps. And it's that time. The goalkeeper's going to ground in the six-yard box, Siobhan Chamberlain. Just making sure that the handling is complete. Look, it's a, it's a whipped-in ball that comes across. It needs someone running across that near post space. United hold their line well enough that there's no time for a Chelsea player to get across. And ends up being a wasted free kick. Yeah, I think she saw Letizia go down as well, so just making sure that she gave her centre-half a little bit more time as Buchanan plays it back to Hannah Hampton, who's been a virtual spectator in the second half, beaten twice in the first. Manchester United still leading 2-1 against a side that they have never beaten in their history. They've only avoided defeat against Chelsea once. It's Chelsea win a free kick on the far side. The yellow card is out as well. This time for Garcia and not for Mayo Letizia. So you can't have too many complaints about that foul being given against. Midway through the second half, Chelsea still pushing for this equaliser in the Women's FA Cup semi-final. Here we say with the high delivery, Loud with the header away, forward by Carter, bit of space for Charles here. Fires it into Williams, who then goes down, Ramirez, saved by Earps, corner. And once again, Earps there for Manchester United. And once again, Chelsea asking questions about whether they could have had more here. Neve Charles against Rachel Williams. The battle at the back post. The first connection, and it's the second connection on the foot. Time and time again, the referee has been asked questions. Time and time again, the answer is no penalty. It's a messy one. Again, seen them given, seen them not given. Rachel Williams currently down, struggling with it. I guess the question there for Kirsty Dowell is how much contact was there between the players? I mean, it was wild from Rachel Williams, but how much contact does she actually make? As changes of foot once again for Manchester United and for Chelsea as well. 2-1 Manchester United lead, but this semi-final feels in the balance, Siobhan Chamberlain, as top scorer Nikita Paris prepares to come on. It definitely does feel in the balance, and that's where you need your squad. That's where you've got players coming on to make an impact, to keep running, to keep moving for you, to keep working the opposition. Well, she has done her job and then some, and so is Leah Galton. They are both off for Manchester United. Galton only recently back from injury. Top scorer Nikita Paris and the France attacker Melvin Mallard are on. Chelsea preparing a double change as well. Will they take this corner first? No, they won't. Right and off. And the player you said you wanted to see, Katarina Macario of the USA, is on. And Kajishi Buchanan is replaced by Shoka Nuskin. So we'll see what that does to Chelsea's formation because Nuskin can really play anyway, but it gives them flexibility if now they want to change it either now or later on in this second half. It does. I mean, it, they could comfortably go to a back three of Perisate, Carter and Charles. Very attacking. 
with Lushkin just sitting in front, moving forwards, but we'll see after this corner. Here is with the delivery. Poor, cleared away by Blundell. Here is James. Cuthbert. Chelsea's hopes of a treble. Really under threat. Rissing Connerid. Decent delivery, vital header by Haley Ladd to take it away from the onrushing Nuskin. Cuthbert to Carter. High looping ball, blue shirts are in there, they got in each other's way, Leipolz and Charles. And Manchester United are off and away. Garcia. Paris will see that ball spin away from her. And it's all the way back with Hannah Hampton. United have got fresh legs in attack now, with Chelsea having to commit so many bodies forward to get that goal, to get them back into this game. It's an opportunity on the break for Manchester United. Here come Chelsea, Ramirez up there. Well, they're appealing for it, Chelsea. They think it should be a corner, decisions goal kick. I mean, it was a bit of a half-hearted appeal, to be honest. There's been lots of appealing in this game, which hasn't gone their way. I think if they wanted that one, which she might have appealed a little bit more convincingly. Well, they're still not happy, Chelsea. Mary Earps is taking as much time as she can over this. Emma Hayes watching on. Is that final trip to Wembley disappearing into the grey skies here above Lee Sports Village? Is it Manchester United who will be heading to their second major final against the side who've won the last three FA Cups in a row, against the side that they have never beaten? Chelsea, though, will not let up for a second. They have been relentless in the second half. They still seek the equaliser. Macario. Still going, Macario. Charles with the delivery. Lead away by Manchester United. And emphatically, eventually, by Mannion. Important clearance herself by Carter, but Leipolz has been robbed. And Manchester United are streaming forward. Garcia, well challenged by Cuthbert, spins to Malar. Tries to keep the momentum of the move going. Cuthbert still down for Chelsea, and Charles does very well there. Calmly takes it away from Melvin Malar. End to end. It is end to end, and Erin Cuthbert has made a phenomenal challenge there, but she's struggling with it. She's not a player that's going to stay down. But right now, she looks in some pain. And Kirsty Dowell has stopped playing. Cuthbert is in real discomfort here. It's an awkward fall. As you say, a vital touch on the ball to get it away from Lucia Garcia. But if there's any player out there on this pitch that isn't going to stay down when they're not injured, it is Erin Cuthbert. It's a brilliant challenge from her, the way she's tracked back. United there had three players up against three Chelsea defenders. It was vital she got that touch. It was a brilliant tackle, but it's as she fell to the floor, as her head whipped back, wasn't a great contact on the grass there, hopefully. Just one that shocks you a little bit and you can spring back from it. I'm sure they won't be taking any, any chances. Well, every game is a huge game now for Chelsea. Got Aston Villa at home on Wednesday, then the reigning European champions, Barcelona away on Saturday, whose manager, Jonathan Giraldez, is in attendance here today. Then the second leg of that semi-final. Will they have an FA Cup final in the mix? They need to score if they're to have a hope of making that trip to Wembley in her final season in charge. What will be going through her mind right now? What changes do I make? Do I make changes? When do I go full out for it? Do I stick with what's working? And there's your answer with one of the changes. Match of the day two tonight and Manchester City against West Ham. 
in the WSL, two of the offerings that we have coming up for you. But here are these Chelsea changes. Cuthbert's game is done. Big player to lose for Chelsea. Frank Kirby is on, along with Aggie Beaver-Jones. Ritten Carnerid, the other player to make way. Does that slightly surprise you about Ritten Carnerid? I think she was more lively in the first half when Chelsea weren't at their best. She's been good the second half, but she's started to fade a little bit as the game's gone on. And for me, Frank Kirby in that number 10 position in the centre of the pitch is still one of the very best in the world. She's brilliant. I don't see her on the pitch enough at the moment because whether she's, whether she's selected, whether she's not fit, but when she is on the pitch, the person that's the best at getting out of pockets, finding gaps and creating opportunities, for me, it's Frank Kirby. 14 minutes to play, plus added time. That is how long Manchester United have to hold out to make history, to beat Chelsea for the first time ever and to reach their second major final. Here comes Chelsea, though. Macario is being pulled back there. In fact, it's Ramirez. And that will be a yellow card into the bargain as well. But Manchester United at this stage in the game might just take those. They definitely will. It's a professional foul there from Eva Mannion. She knew exactly what she was doing. She knew that she needed to pull Ramirez back there. She knew she couldn't let her get through on goal. She's that much of a threat. She said, I'll take the yellow card, I'll take the free kick. So it will be Macario to swing it in. It's a good delivery. Hit it away and then cleared emphatically. Oh, Nikita Paris helping it on. Paris playing it into Carter. And Jess Carter down to the bottom. And oh, she's completely taken out there by Nikita Paris. And the yellow card is out and they are racking up those yellow cards now, Manchester United. They are and it's a reckless tackle from Nikita Paris. Tracking back against Jess Carter there, just flew into it. Completely missed the ball. And a definite yellow card. So Macario once more over this free kick for Chelsea, the USA international. They're running out of time. Macario's delivery, it's another good one, away by Lucia Garcia. Look how deep Manchester United are. They're trying to push up now as James. Out to the left to find Charles. Keeping it alive, Chelsea. Maggie Beaver-Jones will chase and retrieve. Macario flicked on by Kirby. Turner away for Manchester United. Beaver-Jones underneath it. But Ramirez won't keep it in. You can, we can look at the number of attacking players Chelsea now have on the pitch, how many goal scorers they've got, the attacking threats. But can Emma Hayes get them to play in a formation that works and they find their own positions? Mary Earps, the latest to join him with the yellow card spree for Manchester United. It's quite difficult that as a goalkeeper, getting a yellow card for time wasting when you've still probably got a good 15 maybe even more minutes remaining. It's going to make it difficult for her to try and manage the time for the next period. Well, we have seen referees clamp down on that in the WSL. Thinking in particular of Alex Greenwood, second yellow for Manchester City against Chelsea. Chelsea with defending to do, and Carter does it. Manchester United throw. And this is where Manchester United can be dangerous. They've got fresh bodies on up top pit, up to the top end of the pitch. And Chelsea are committing bodies forward. Mannion with the throw. Here is Mala. Mannion's delivery in. Only Lucia Garcia is there, but she does reach it. Went for the acrobatic. Shows the confidence that Garcia is playing with right now. That would have been a spectacular goal to finish off this FA Cup semi-final with, had it been anywhere near the goal. 41 seconds it took her to score at the start of this game. And 
Manchester United still preserving their lead. Licked on by James, headed away by Le Cissier. Life holds to Kirby. This is where all of that big game experience, all of those trophies they've won between them, this squad, has to come to bear for Chelsea. And this is where Manchester United have to keep focused. Have to put aside, just for now, that dream of Wembley that is so tantalisingly close. And just focus, minute by minute, tackle by tackle, decision by decision, what do I need to do to win my individual battle? Because that dream is what's hovering over them. The fans know it, Mark Skinner knows it. As Chelsea make another change, Perisay off, Ashley Lawrence on. Easy Last throw of the dice for Chelsea. It is, as you said before, easier said than done. That that Wembley dangling in the background. Oh, difficult corner, and it's off the top of the bar. Chelsea so close to an equaliser in fortuitous circumstances. And what an effort, if it was an effort, from Katerina Macario. Her deliveries have been on point, and you can see her head in her hands. It's normally Katie Zellum at the other end who causes those sort of problems for Manchester United, but Macario, the woodwork away from levelling this tie-up for Chelsea. It is. We've seen a few goals here direct from corners in the WSL, as you said. A few from Katie Zellum. That one came agonisingly close for Katerina Macario. Well, a fortnight ago, the dream was of the quadruple. Coming into this game, it was of the treble. Is that dream going to dissipate for Chelsea? Can Manchester United confirm that that will be so? Ricochet inside the area. The fans are screaming for a penalty as Larson went down, but not the players, and the chance is gone. Lag got to the ball first, Chelsea throw. Great defending by Hayley Ladd there, and that's why she's on the pitch, that's why she's come on for Elatoun. But you can see the challenge there. Nothing really in it from that angle. Melanie Leopold standing her ground. Being firm, being solid, good strong defending. Here is Lawrence. Hampton close down by Mallow. Now Charles. Macario. Good ball, almost. Just too much on it for Beaver Jones with a beaten Blundell, but beats Beaver Jones as well. The vision on that pass from Katerina Macario was something else. The way she saw Beaver Jones on that back shoulder, that was the space, that was the right ball. Eva Jones just came in central a tad too early. Hold her ground out wide. She would have been back in. Round backs up back of Hannah Blundell and in on goal. Oh, frustration for those Chelsea fans. Is this final season for Emma Hayes unravelling? Still got a Champions League semi-final to come. Still very much in the title race, but they could be out of the FA Cup as the flag goes up against Nelson, who squares it to Garcia. And Hampton had already seen the flag. Manchester United protest. And slowly it dawns on this stadium that that goal is not going to count. I think you were one of the first to see that flag long before the Chelsea. Oh, sorry, long before the United players and long before the United fans. As the ball comes through, it ricochets. It's a difficult decision to make when it's a deflection. Here is James, blocked away by Letizia. Every block cheered to the rafters by the Manchester United fans now, and that decision will be as well. Paris down, free kick. They are edging closer to full time. They're edging closer to Wembley. And Mary Herbs has gone down again. And so play will stop. And Siobhan Chamberlain, do you want to get off the fence now? 
She may have struggled with an injury that she picked up of the knock from Guru Wrighton. Manchester United taking the opportunity to get some information, potentially take the, the sting and the momentum out of the game right now, but Chelsea using it as an opportunity also. They've made so many changes. I'm sure some of the players on the pitch might find it difficult to understand where they are. Chelsea still have the Champions League to play for. Chelsea still have the WSL title to play for. Does Manchester United season come down to the next five minutes plus added time? 100% it does. This is all they've got left to play for. They're out of the race for Europe. They're out of the race for the league. This is their final opportunity for some silverware. And what a big opportunity it is. A day out at Wembley against Tottenham Hotspur. Yes, Tottenham reaching their first ever Women's FA Cup final, courtesy of the former Manchester United player, Martha Thomas, who scored late on in extra time to send them through 2-1 at the expense of Leicester. They await at Wembley. Will it be Manchester United? Will they see this out? Or will it be Chelsea? Can they find a leveller and take us to extra time against Mark Skinner's side? If they do make it through to Wembley, it will be a weakened Tottenham Hotspur that they will have to face with the absence of Grace Clinton, who's done so well to get them to that final. Heartbreak for her if she's unable to fly at Wembley, but I'm sure with the talent that she is, she will have many more opportunities. Yes, on loan from Manchester United, of course. Mary Ertz is back up to her feet. And time ticks away. Earp sends it long. Cleared away by Charles. Helps on by Ladd and Malaz on the chase. Back to out like a flash. There was late drama here for Manchester United in the semi-final last season against Brighton. Rachel Williams scored the late winner. Will there be late drama here against Chelsea or will that goal from Williams against her former club prove to be the winner? That's how it stands at the moment. Two and a half minutes plus out of time to play. But here comes Chelsea. It's Neve Charles. The touch was heavy. The ball is Earps. The ball is Mary Earps, but there's not too much time she can loiter on it. Can't waste too much time after picking up a yellow card. Forward by Charles. Well, the nerves are so, so tight and tense for those Manchester United fans. They know how close they are. And for Chelsea, is this to be the second serious disappointment in the space of a couple of weeks? Losing the League Cup final to Arsenal. They're heading out of the FA Cup. The side who've won the last three in a row. They've won it five times under Emma Hayes. It will stay at five in this her final season with the club, unless they can find a lake equaliser. And then it's all up in the air again. Forward by Lads. Garcia was fouled. Manchester United have a free kick. Garcia's been great for Manchester United today. She's worked tirelessly. She got the early goal. But there it was an easy ball to give up on. Just to say, Chelsea's will sit back, we'll get our shape. But she hasn't, she's pressed, she's kept on pressing and she's created an opportunity for her team. Well, they are sending a few red shirts forward Manchester United, but a good four are staying back. Katie Zellum is ordering more players out of the penalty area, it looks like. But they're going to have to get on with it. If you want them to get out of the penalty area, Katie, I would just play it down there. It's in two minds now. Well, there's an option. Lad in space. Lead away by Charles. Lad is there for Manchester United again. Big up and under. Eight minutes at a time. 
Listen to the groan around Lee's Force Village, followed by an almost hush. Eight minutes still to go. They can't believe it. They're so close to Wembley for only the second time in the club's history. Reformed in 2018, reached the first major final last season, lost it to Chelsea, but now on the verge of knocking Chelsea out of the FA Cup. And the slip from Nuskin didn't prove costly, it could have done. Paris, Garcia, can Manchester United finish Chelsea off? Or is this about game management now as the momentum just ebbs out of that attack? Garcia. Bit of space though for Paris because Chelsea have pushed forward and suddenly Manchester United with a real opening. Paris across, saved by Hampton and does gather at the second attempt. That's a huge save from Hampton and the distribution as well. Straight down, straight back up the other end for Macario to attack. Here comes Chelsea, Kirby. Lawrence, Ramirez, won't quite fall for Macario, sliding interception by Zellum, and Blundell clears away for Manchester United. It'll push perhaps by Lawrence and Nolson. If there was, it's gone unpunished, and Chelsea have the throw. Beaver Jones, Kirby, Macario, James. Charles. Well shepherded behind by Mary Ertz and the chance is gone for Chelsea. It's a poor touch there by Neve Charles. She's had a good game. She got the assist for Chelsea's goal, which got them back into it. And you can see here the save from Hannah Hampton. The audacious little chip over the top from Garcia. And Nikita Paris just drives in. She reacts quickest after a Bundle of bodies at that near post and does enough to make that save. Mary Earps absolutely taking every second she can. On that yellow card, has to tread a fine line there as the up and under won't quite set Manchester United away, but Chelsea are leaving themselves exposed at the back, as you can understand at this point, but there is a chance for Manchester United, if it breaks kindly, to get that surely decisive goal. Chelsea come, Kirby, Macario, Nuskin up from the back. Here's Charles, pressured by Paris. Macario picks it up, and here she goes. Katerina Macario, cleared away by Mannion. Malar helps it on, and Chelsea will be stretched if United can counter. They can't. Good footing by Leipolz. Charles wants more. Early delivery, away by Turner. Malar helps it on, only as far as Kirby. James to Lawrence. Nuskin wants it. Nuskin gets it. Nuskin's delivery, flicked away by Paris. Charles picks it up for Chelsea. Look how deep Manchester United are as they try and hold on to this lead. Carter, Lawrence forward, it's aimless. It's out for a Manchester United goal kick. It's wasteful there from Chelsea. They were moving the ball around well. They still got what, five, six minutes to play. Don't need to force it so quickly. We've got the opportunity to build. The United fans are definitely starting to enjoy this more than the Chelsea fans. Is their time, or have they left it too late? Emma Hayes aside. Free kick goes the way of Chelsea. Hampton's up to take it. And everybody. He's going forward. Hampton to send it long. Forward by Carter. Beaver Jones. Macario. Paris away from Charles. Chelsea throw. Ramirez. Having her arm tugged there, but referee will let play go on. James. Ramirez, miscue. Kirby can't latch onto it. Here is Lawrence. Chelsea come again. Macario, it's so congested in there, but a bit of space now for Beaver Jones. 
saw the glory, saw the headlines, found the side netting. I think she made the right choice there. The ball fell for her nicely. She pulled out wide in this right position. You can see as she receives it. The first touch was good. Just slashed at the ball, just took it with the outside of her foot, needed to come across goal. If it comes across goal, any deflection it gets could result in a deflected goal, could, res could result in a rebound. Hitting it wide is the worst place that she could go. Garcia down, no free kick. Kirby for Chelsea. Lawrence straight into Malar and it breaks kindly for Malar. The early shot! Almost! Right idea from Melvin Malar. And it almost sent Manchester United definitively to Wembley. Well, that would have been an absolutely brilliant way to send your team to Wembley. Got the lucky bounce, saw Hannah Hampton off her line. Bruno Fernando-esque. Couldn't quite get the connection. Carter's ball to the edge of the area. Macario won't bring it down. It's headed up by New Skin on by Charles. Half away by Mannion. Charles once again. Macario, bit of control. Can she get the ball across? Yes, she can. It's over the head of James and it bounces off Kirby. And Manchester United survive. Lawrence with the throw. Lawrence's delivery. Ramirez. Erps with the save, but she didn't keep it in. It's a Chelsea corner. And surely now Hannah Hampton, yes, she's going forward. This is it for Chelsea. This is it for their hopes of the treble. One more chance. One more opportunity. One more trip to Wembley. At least it would force extra time. That's what they're hoping for now. Otherwise, it's going to be history for Manchester United, who have never beaten Chelsea. They're on the brink of doing so. They're on the brink of Wembley. Unless Chelsea can score from this corner. Macario's delivery. Hampton's there. It was met by Lawrence. And Erbs will watch it behind. And Manchester United are on the brink. That was it, that was the moment. The players are waiting, the, rest, the fans are waiting. History for Manchester United and Mark Skinner. The club's first ever victory over Chelsea. And what a time to get it. It sends them to Wembley for the second time in their history. They will contest their second major final. And just look what it means to these players. Chelsea's treble hopes are in tatters. They have been beaten in this FA Cup semi-final by two goals to one by a quite brilliant Manchester United. Wow, what a game, what a performance. And Lee Sports Village has just absolutely erupted. This crowd is so excited. They've had the best match to watch to get them to a final. And wow, wow is all I can say right now for Manchester United to put on that performance, to get the victory against this top Chelsea team, to get them to Wembley for another FA Cup final is phenomenal. There are tears, there are cheers, there are hugs and smiles. These players will be heading to Wembley to face Tottenham Hotspur in the Women's FA Cup final. And for Manchester United, who have endured a disappointing season in the league, that dream of winning their first major trophy is very much alive. It's definitely alive and it's kicking. And what a final lined up at Wembley Stadium. And we'll have a new winner. History made here. Can they make it at Wembley?
for Chelsea, it is bitter disappointment. They won the last three Women's FA Cups, but they won't be winning this season. They have the WSL title to fight for. They have the Champions League to fight for. That is it now. Two weeks ago, it was a quadruple. But here, it finishes. Manchester United 2, Chelsea 1. Manchester United through to the FA Cup final. Vicky, Siobhan, thank you very much. Manchester United beating Chelsea. Not something that Manchester United fans have been used to, but they are loving every moment here today. They can now book their travel to Wembley next month, Felon. 100%. I think these fans have been incredible today. That, that, that noise at the end when that final whistle went. And that's the performance I feel these fans have been waiting for this season. That first half display, front foot, pressure, goals, and then that defensive display in that second half, ruthless. And they were just putting their bodies on the line. Uh, unbelievable. And they thoroughly, thoroughly deserve to be in this FA Cup final. It was so exciting. That second half, they got themselves in a great position coming out, absolutely flying out the traps in the first half, going 2-0 up and then putting on the back foot, going 2-1 down, uh, sorry, remaining 2-1 up but conceding a goal just before half-time. Mark Skinner said, look, you know Chelsea are going to come at you. They're going to not stop coming at you until the 98th, 99th, 100th minute and they absorbed it wave after wave. The collective display of being a United team, they wore that with pride today. Manchester United, phenomenal performance. Mark Skinner should be so, so proud. And Emma Hayes right there. Obviously, a lot of attention has been on her and Chelsea. And push come to shove today. She made a lot of changes in those second in the second half, but it didn't work out for them. No, it didn't work out. Two games, they're out of two competitions. So they've gone from the quadruple now to potentially the double, and that's that's a that's a massive one for these Chelsea players to take. Two massive, massive losses. They, they tried everything second half, but this Manchester United team just did too. They just were so resolute in that second half. It was unbelievable. Well, I tell you what, right now, there's hugs going on in the presentation area as Mary Earps, come right here, Hi, joins you. us. Thank you for coming over to join us with the celebrations Who's going on. Who's wrong there? <laughs> Sacked. Sacked. Why, why are you outing me to the nation, Mary? <laughs> this is your moment right now. Look, how does it feel that you are returning to Wembley with Manchester United? Oh, so good. You know,